Hey, hey, friends, welcome to this intermediate yoga class where we are going to open up through the entire front chain of the body and move into a variety of back bends. Now, since this is an intermediate class, there will be more minimal cueing, and you won't need anything except for yourself, your mat, and your breath. But if you do like to have some props nearby, then this is your practice. Go ahead and have them nearby. And hi, I'm Kate. If we haven't practiced together yet, then this is an exciting and fun class to kick our friendship off with. And of course, if you have practiced with me before, then welcome back. I'm so glad to be practicing with you again. Now let's take a big inhale. Let it go through the mouth. Let's hop into it. All right, friends, let's go ahead and start class at the back of our mat in child's pose. Knees wide, big toes come to kiss. Fold it forward. It's time to arrive on our mat. So see where you can soften and just be held by the earth. Let everything from before this class or after melt away and just settle into your body. Start to follow your breath. First, just an acknowledgement of where it is. Is it shallow? or deep, long, or short, no judgment. And then start to deepen your breath. Long inhales through the nose. And out through the mouth. In through the nose. Now through the mouth. One more time. This time we seal the mouth. And exhale through the nose. Softening our forehead, our jaw, shoulders, hips. Two more big breaths here. And then take your right hand and needle it in between your left arm and your left leg for a twist. Left hand can remain overhead or swirl it around into your right side pocket. Come back through center. Take a breath here. Before switching it onto the other side, left hand needles in between your right hand and your right leg. And come back to center, click the knees into about hips distance apart, and we'll crawl our hands forward until we arrive in our puppy pose, getting right into the shoulders, into the chest. You can find little pulses here since the beginning of class. 
We're just creating more space. Beautiful, then start to walk your hands back towards your body, tuck your toes and come into a toe stand. Balancing on our toes, take the knees wide and we'll just swivel our knees from one side to the other, engaging the core, testing our balance, but moving with a sense of ease. And see if you can reach it forward in this toe stand, shifting the weight, playing with it. And maybe you reach straight up. Beautiful, then plant the hands, start to walk forward and come to your knees, chest, chin pose. Does not have to be very intense or very deep. And inhale into Sphinx pose. Keeping a long neck here, shoulders down the back, shine the heart center forward to bring the stretch into the thoracic spine, that upper spine that isn't as mobile as the lumbar spine. But that's where we're gonna be working into the full of the spine today. Reach the left arm up in space and the right leg up in space, activating the back and lower. Reset your sphinx. Then the right arm rises, left leg rises, squeeze, 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 and release, reset. One more time each side, left arm, right leg, squeeze them up and lower to sphinx. Right arm rises, left leg rises, up, up, up and release. One more full breath in sphinx pose. Perhaps you stay here, press into the hands and come into seal pose. If you are in seal, go ahead and lower, walk the hands back, see if you can get a little bit more height. And see again if you can walk the hands back just an inch or so. Beautiful. Start to tuck the toes and raise the hips back to downward dog. We'll step the right knee forward and come into a supported plank. So left arm reaching towards the side of the room. Getting a full body side stretch and reach the arm straight up. Make a fist and start to round the wrist. Circles in one direction. And the other. And make big arm circles in one direction. Then the other. And then reach overhead. Press off the ground, come into your gate pose. Your inhale brings you up to center. Your exhale sends you into supported plank. Your inhale brings you up. Your exhale sends you into gate. So follow your breath through this flow.
one more time. Face the front of the mat, plant the left hand, step back into downward dog. And we'll take our left knee up into our supported side plank. Our right hand overhead, spiraling the chest open, feeling a beautiful side body stretch. Then take the arm straight up, make a fist, and roll out the wrist. One direction. Then the other. And roll out the arm. Make as big a circle as possible. Other direction. And reach your arm towards the front of the room. Spiral the chest open. On your inhale, come up. And your exhale, move into gate pose. Inhale through center. Exhale back to supported side plank. With your breath now. Plant the right hand on the mat, step back into downward dog. Before we play around in downward dog, we'll take it one more time. Step your right knee up, come into your supported side plank. This time a little bit different. Instead of waving up and over, we'll wave forward into gate pose. Maybe your right arm reaches back towards the back of the room. Moving it into a back bend and then come through your side plank and your left arm reaches back with your breath through these half circles or depending on how far you're going back, they may be more than half circles. One more time, each side. And plant both hands, step into downward dog. Switch out the right leg with the left leg into your supported side plank. Right arm reaches to the side of the room. Wave it all forward and move into your gate pose. See if your left hand can reach a little back behind you. Round it forward, and your right arm reaches back behind you. I find that this position has a little bit more room for the spine. With your breath. One more time, each side. Beautiful, plant both hands. Take your downward dog. And downward, come up to your tiptoes. Tuck your tailbone first to start your spinal wave. Let the first one be clunky, knowing that the more you do, the more you tap in, the smoother your spinal waves will go. There's no wrong way to do it. 
Don't worry about how it looks. Focus more on how it feels. And one more. Inhale your right leg up. And exhale, step it forward into your low lunge. Untuck the back toe. Inhale, both arms skyward. And exhale, right hand meets the mat. Take a stretch with your left hand over. Again, see if you can kind of reach it towards the back of the room. Take a bit of a back bend here, but keep strong, keep the integrity. And then switch it out, left hand comes down, right hand reaches over. Crawl your left hand towards the back of the mat. Maybe it even finds your leg. Reach the right hand back in space. Maybe you reach it so far back that your front leg starts to straighten. And with control, if it's straightened, then start to rebend it. Inhale both arms up. And exhale to cactus arms. See if you can pivot and rotate the top of your rib cage, that thoracic spine, also known as the thoracic cage, up towards the sky. So it's almost like you're scooping your heart under. Something that helps is to start to try to get your forearms parallel towards the sky. It helps with the rotation. Exhale, both hands meet in the mat. Step the right foot back. Knees, chest, chin. Make any adjustments. Take a full breath here. And then inhale to your up dog. Make this a very strong up dog. Knees are raising. Chest is shining forward. And exhale, down dog, beautiful. Inhale, the left leg rises. And exhale, step it forward. Inhale, both arms rise, sink the hips in. Left hand plants, right arm reaches up and over, spiral the chest open. Switch out the hands, left arm reaches over. See if you can crawl your hand back. Maybe it reaches your leg. If it reaches your leg or near your leg, start to crawl your right hand back towards your foot. Your left leg straightens, still reaching towards the back of the room. And slowly with control, rebend. Inhale both arms skyward and exhale, peel them open, cactus. Shine your heart center skyward. Nice and strong as if you're lifting everything, not folding back, but lifting like arching of a rainbow. Exhale, plant both hands, step the left foot back to meet the right foot. Chin, chest, knees, meet the mat. I said the wrong order, but I know you got it. One breath in, one breath out. Inhale to your up dog, nice and strong. Exhale, down dog, beautiful. Press into the palms, reach the heels towards the mat, feel the opening in the back of your legs. (sighs) 
Inhale your right leg up. Bend at the knee. See if you could bring your toes as close to your head as possible. Maybe you even look up with your gaze. Keep the eyebrows down the face. And exhale, bring your right knee to your left elbow. Extend the leg across the body for fallen triangle. Pick up the left hand. We're gonna move into a side plank on the left, so plant the left hand. Right leg reaches up towards the sky. And slowly place the right leg down and open into your wild thing. With control, come back through center. Step the right foot to the top of the mat. Drop the back knee, cactus the arms, open up. Tuck the back toe, build your strength, get your core, lift the back knee a few inches off the mat. Exhale, plant both hands, step the foot back, knees, chest, chin. One breath in. One breath out. Inhale to an up dog. Exhale, down dog. Inhale, left leg up. Bend at the knee, point the toes at the head. See if you can bend through the neck. Try to connect your foot to your head. And then slowly on your exhale, bring your left knee to your right elbow. Extend the leg, fall in triangle, hips rise. Right hand comes down. Swivel the left leg up and around as the left arm reaches towards the sky. Step the right foot back behind you and open into your wild thing. Come back through center. Step the left foot up to the top of the mat. Back knee meets the mat and open into your crescent lunge. Regulate the breath here, then tuck the back toe and raise your back knee up a few inches off the mat. Keep the hips where they are. Both hands meet the mat. Step the left foot back, knees, chest, chin on the mat. Inhale to your up dog. Exhale to your down dog. Take your left foot and create a figure four in this downward dog. See if you can open your knee out to the side. Mind the bandhas here. So the core is in and up, hands are locked, feet are rooted. And then slowly bring your bent left leg up to the top of the mat and settle into pigeon. We'll take an active pigeon to get into the back and the hips, so stay upright. Maybe you have both hands on the mat. Maybe you reach your right hand up to the sky. Maybe you reach your left hand up to the sky. Your gaze turns skyward. Breathe easy, regulate. If you have both hands up, bring them to prayer, hands at heart center, 
and without touching the mat, or maybe with one hand, come down to humble pigeon and come back up. Working the glutes, working the back, come down, then up, one more time, down, then up, plant both hands, tuck the back toe, and lift into your downward dog. Find your figure four on the right. See if you can really squeeze everything in and up here. So right knee is going wide, maybe even towards the back of the room. Hands are gripping. Your left foot is as solid as possible on the mat. And your core is active and hollow. And bring it on up, set up for pigeon on the right. Maybe you keep both hands on the mat and stay upright. Maybe you lift your left hand up. Maybe your right hand up. And look up. If both your hands are up, bring your hands to prayer pose at your heart. And we'll take those controlled dips. So lean forward. And come up. Forward. And up. And forward. And up. Plant the hands. Tuck the back toe, lift into downward facing dog. One last breath here. Make it intentional and big. And then come into a seat on your knees. Even better if you can come into Varasana or Hero's Pose with your ankles on the outside of your thighs. That way you get this external rotation of the legs that's gonna help us with these camel rounds. But if you're on your knees, that's perfectly fine. Place your right hand by your foot. Your left arm reaches up and over. Hips rise, camel pose. Exhale, brings you back to center. Nice slow breaths. Left hand plants, right arm reaches, inhale. Exhale. With your breath, move as slowly as you can, as is comfortable. One more time each side. Keep the eyebrows down the face. Nice soft face here. And take a seat. Close the eyes down. Bring the hands to your thighs. Let everything settle. Ease, regulate. Then bring both feet forward. We'll come into a reverse tabletop for our last backbending series. Now for this one, 
When I take one hand up, I usually like to have my propped hand fingers towards the inside line of the mat. That's where I feel like I can get the best external rotation and feel the most support. So you might want to try that, is as you bring one arm up, you rotate your fingers in. So we'll start with our tabletop. Squeeze the glutes, press into the heels, lift the hips. Press into the right hand, twist the fingers towards the inside of the mat as your left hand reaches up and over. And exhale, place it down, switch it out. Right hand reaches up and over with your breath here. If you feel like you have enough room and space to touch down and come into wheel, then please do. But do it with ease and press into your hands a lot. Trying to shift your chest over your wrist. For three, for two, for one, then come all the way onto your back. Feel the full of your spine imprinting onto the mat. Bring the knees into the chest. You can stay here and rock side to side. Or you can take your legs up and come into a shoulder stand. <laughs> I just kicked my plant, so I'm going to lovingly kick her out of the way. And I want to show you a fun little circus trick, a little flare, if you will. Instead of just bringing your legs straight down back behind you like a, like a controlled pike, what you can do is when your legs are straight up, internally rotate your legs so your knees are together and touching. The top of your feet are touching as much as possible. Keep your knees together. Take the feet wide as if you're drawing a big circle. Once they kind of come near your booty, they come together and the knees come out. So it'll look like a nice little circle. Just little fancy leg movements. But nothing has to be fancy at all. It's just a fun little thing. If you want to add it, you can. And if you are in shoulder stand, whenever you've had enough, bring your legs back up, support your hips, and slowly roll down vertebrae by vertebrae. <laughs> then we'll come into happy baby. Feeling really grounded here feeling a sense of courage, of bravery even. Back bends can be intense and they can stir up a lot. But regulating yourself through this class and moving through it with ease, gifting yourself the time to even move into poses that maybe you don't visit too often, or maybe you love them and you visit them a lot. Either way, in this grounded happy baby, send gratitude straight to your heart. Maybe a little smile comes to your eyes, maybe your face. and release your happy baby. Let your legs come long. 
ankles open. Find your Shavasana. You have earned it. Fully relax into this. I will sweetly pull you out. Start to deepen your breaths. Gently touch your fingertips to fingertips. And move your toes. Roll out your wrists. Roll out your ankles. Maybe you open and close your jaw. On your next inhale, stretch long like a cat, arms overhead. And roll over onto your favorite side. Keep the eyes closed. Take a few breaths here. Let your body adjust. And keeping the eyes closed, come up to an easy seat. Let's have a deep sense of gratitude for the energy that you have created today. And thank you so much for sharing your energy with me during this class. Namaste, sweet friends. I hope you feel energized and opened in your body and I hope you feel empowered because backbends can be very empowering. Come back to this class anytime you need a little opening of the front chain or some fun backbends. I will see you on the mat soon.